Real screeners back at you with a review for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, or was it Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead, or Sam Raimi's The Spider-Man Trilogy with Tobey Maguire, <laughs> or, I'm just kidding, <laughs> Doctor Strange and the uh, Army of Darkness? There you go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it, 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 that's, that's a good question, right? Does the movie fit both of those well, or can it not choose a side? I mean, is, is there too much Raimiism in this? Well, you will find out coming up next. It was a masterpiece. I mean, I'm gonna give it five yeah, reels really for boredom. sure. What? <laughs> <laughs> Now, before we jump into the multiverse of madness, just want to let you guys know that we would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe, if you like our content. Also, hit that like button, share it with everyone, hit the bell button, all that kind of good stuff. Get that algorithm going so everyone can watch our videos, Beto. Absolutely. Everyone. Everyone in every multiverse. That's right. Exactly. Yes, Across the multiverse. Person. Okay. So, we'll get into a synopsis of multiverse of madness. So, essentially, we have a new character named America. So she's played by by Sochi Gomez, newcomer Sochi Gomez, and she has this uh, ability to open up portals or gates to different multiverses, right? It's right. her gift. And the gates are star-shaped, coincidentally. Star <laughs> Coming off of WandaVision, we have Wanda Maximoff, who is still, you know, kind of mentally unstable. Kind of? To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much trying to, uh, f f with her evil ways, try to kind of gain that which she has lost, right? And so once she hears about America's powers, America. she is on a mission to find her so that she can traverse to different multiverses to attain what she desires. And Doctor Strange needs to put an end to this, essentially. That, that's right, because he's like the world's greatest superhero, apparently, he's, he's, right? He's the one wizard to rule them all. Make no mistake, this is a Sam Raimi movie with tons of action, horror, you know, crazy camera angles. Of course, we're not going to get an MCU movie that is rated R, so I think oh. that that unfortunately holds back a lot lot of the Raimi elements that I wish could have been in this movie. Still though, you will not be disappointed to find out that you get a lot of Raimi elements in here. From the camera techniques, his signature, like fast push-ins, <laughs> close-ups, you know, his eerie, weird, random sound effects of, of shrills and screams, you know, a lot of grotesque imagery. Yes. Absolutely. And Very you over still the top. get the blood and you still get the extravagance and the over the top and the one word that describes this movie is campiness and spoofiness yep. for sure. Great parody, yeah. And that's if you look at this film from that angle, you will love this movie because it gives this uh, film a, a signature. You know, it, it separates it from all the MCU uh, mm -hmm. films. And in that way, it is very Raimi. And that is why I enjoy this movie. Yeah, uh, there, there's, there's much to like about this movie, right? You talk about the Raimi elements. It's very fast paced and that keeps you engaged. Like, for example, I was in the theater telling Beto, like, like, hey, man, uh, I can already tell. I'm going to have to hold it for a while because I'm not leaving this movie because I'm going to miss something. I'm not going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, it's too, it's, it's, it was too fast. Well, not too fast, but it was fast enough to where you're like, there's there's something to anticipate. Yes. You know, and your eyes are plugged to it, you know. Uh, yes, but the absolutely. But the flip side of that coin, though, was I kind of thought that that made it, in a sense, feel kind of episodic because I wanted it to take a breath, you know. Take a step back. Give me a little bit more character development because you That character development. Yeah, that's, that's always what I'm always, harping about. I was yeah. craving that character development. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. more backstory, a little bit more of Wanda's transformation into this evil character because she's being seduced by this book called The Dark Hold and all that. Right. And, but still, hey. Which she uses to basically like uh, be able to access other versions of herself uh, right. through mental manipulation, right? Yeah, they call it dream walking. Dream walking. Yeah. And she can control other versions of herself, which is a very interesting concept for sure. No, this is a movie that does not let up. It, it's one cool fight scene after another but they're so well done and I mm -hmm. love the sorcery and, and the way that they portray her as this powerful witch, this uh, sorceress to contend with right? She, No one can stand up to her and yeah. as far as I know in the comics she's very powerful and I, I'm glad oh, that they portrayed her Barry's an that. understatement for sure. Yeah, 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 I'm glad that they portrayed her in that way in this movie so I, I dug that for sure. Well they kind of portrayed her back, they were a little inconsistent with her power set if I'm going to be 
picky about her portrayal as a That's Scarlet true. Witch. That's true. Like, why? Yeah, she could have totally, like, uh, demised everything, right? Yeah. A lot faster. Same thing with Doctor Strange. Like, why are you Why are you guys trying to cut off tentacles of the monster when you could just go like this? But the comics kind of yeah. come off that way, too, right? Yeah, they got to keep you hooked, right? Of course. Guys? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> as far as uh, uh, weaknesses, right? Because we've been talking about all the things that we love about this movie. We have to talk about the uh, amount of uh, cameos that they have in this movie. Yeah. Especially through the Illuminati. The Illuminati, because everyone has Everyone's to have an been Illuminati. Talking about the Illuminati, <laughs> right? And so they do exist. <laughs> they do. <laughs> but we won't tell you who exists in the Illuminati. In the Illuminati, <laughs> or who appears as uh, some of these characters. But there's sure. a, quite a bit of surprises here from unexpected, you know, actors that pop in. And you get chills because I was clapping and I was like, yeah, yeah when I saw people, certain characters. People ate that up. However, if there is no rhyme or reason to put these actors or to put these characters in this film, mm -hmm. which there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're plot it's a plot device. Yeah, yeah. But I was so disappointed that they introduced these awesome characters and actors uh, only to... Well, they just <laughs> didn't do much with them, you know? Yeah. They yeah. just didn't do much with them, and that was a disappointment. Kind of a letdown, yeah. It was a letdown. Uh, same thing with the post credit scenes. I mean, they, they're beginning to feel really gimmicky and kind of like... Formulaic. Formulaic. It's, 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 it's that Marvel Let's machine. Let's introduce a, a new person, a new character, get people hyped up for, for what? You know? I mean, let's do something different. But for anyway, the next Marvel movie. <laughs> the, yes, yes, yes. But uh, that that's, that's where I felt the movie didn't really work for me, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I reveled in the campiness, the spoofiness, all of that stuff I loved. Yeah. You also reveled in the acting, right? You I were did. to me. I did. I did revel in the acting. Well, some of the acting. Uh, some of the acting. <laughs> you know, I think that this movie belongs to Elizabeth Olsen. I, I, and I know that we disagree. We on disagree that point, on that. But uh, I, I really felt that her approach to this kind of like, of course. I feel like most of the acting in this movie is over the top, but I feel like that's done on purpose to go with the kind of mood that it's is relevant, kind of yeah. created in the movie. But uh, definitely over the top, but she captures that malevolence and that evil essence very well. But the, the one disappointment in that arena is Sochi uh, Gomez playing America. I, I honestly can't get a sense as to uh, her acting chops and how good she is as an actress because I just kind of feel like she was poorly written into this movie. She was just kind of thrown in there. We know nothing about her other than she has these powers and there's really no depth to her and she's severely overshadowed by all of the other actors and characters in this movie. So... Yeah, See, I, I it, wanted more from it, her, and, and that's so. I kind of, I'm kind of on the fence when it comes to you know America Chavez with that, um, with Sochi, excuse me, Sochi Gomez on that because right. I kind of feel like it's it's not her movie, right? But at the same time, you do want some of that character depth. And that's what I was talking about, like kind of glossing over some things. They mentioned something about her background, but didn't really go too deep into it. I thought she did well for what she was given and for what she was expected to do in this movie. Um, she's just kind of there. She's, she's, again, a plot device. Yeah. They're introducing her, I'm sure, as part of the next generation of superheroes for the MCU. You know, we mentioned that she plays Miss America. I mean, there is a Miss America superhero for that in character the comics, in the right? comics. Yeah. And so that's my thoughts on, those are my thoughts on her. As far as as Elizabeth Olsen, you know, when I first saw her being evil, I honestly, I felt it was very cringy. I felt like it was a little forced, a little heavy handed as far as the evil. But, yeah, and I can see that, yeah. But I did kind of warm up to it as the movie went on because they kind of started to humanize her. Yeah. And she kind of toned it down slightly. Yeah. So this movie, it is teeming with action and, you know, Sam Raimi-isms, right? Some brutality as, as, as best you can do in a PG-13 flick. But uh, definitely a movie, guys. You should go to the theaters to watch for sure. Not because we're trying to support theaters, but this is a spectacle for the eyes, you know? Oh, yeah. It, it was very colorful. It was a tapestry of colors that were relevant to the scenes. Psychedelic trippiness for sure. Yeah, and if yeah. you're into themes, you know, and deep meetings and social commentary, you know, this, this has a tragic thread through it. Absolutely. You know, talking about the lengths that people will go 
to try to regain that which they've lost. You know, how they're blinded by love, by their yeah. obsessions, things Ex- like that. Accepting losses, of learning course. from others' mistakes. You know, getting second chances, all that kind of good stuff, guys. So yep. definitely a, worth a watch, guys. So, I, I, I think Bethel's going to be surprised. You let me know yeah. because I wasn't as thrilled about this movie coming out of, coming out of the theater as he was, but that's because I didn't want to let him know what I was thinking <laughs> for the review. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'm on, I'm going to go ahead and give this four and a half reels out of five. Uh, we're being Watch deceitful this. now. Huh? <laughs> Sneaky. Okay. Sneak, All right. Sneak. Well, yeah, four and a half. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. So it's enjoyable. It's because myself. it was so much fun. You know, if I if I really dwell on the plot holes, if I dwell on the lack of of giving characters importance or relevance or depth, uh, then I would rank this movie a lot lower than what I'm about to give it. But because it has so many other elements that really made it for me, and I found myself laughing and exclaiming yes throughout the movie. It's because Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell was in it. Oh, Bru- That's why. Bruce Campbell was in it, of course. <laughs> uh, but it's it's all the Sam Raimi love that is put into this movie. You know, the grotesque elements, the mystical elements. You kind of have those, you know, that that mystique from the first Doctor Strange. But it's like the rippling of the Sam Raimi elements. If you love horror if you love campiness this is what you're going to get in this movie and that's why I love it. It's a it. 5, right? No, it's not a 5. It's not a 5? It is a 4 out of 5. A 4 out of 5? Yeah, because I, of the wow. other reasons I mentioned. It's I, it's, a, it's a 4 out of 5. I Absolutely. thought you would at least give it a 4 and Absolutely a half. Absolutely. Wow. No. No, 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 no. Interesting. Balanced. You we got to keep it day, balanced. Man. Yes. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's our review for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Also, check out our website realscreeners.com where you can find awesome original movie mashups that Bethel and I am made such as this Deadpool Indiana Jones mashup he's wearing guys and comment down below let us know what you think about our review and about this movie a lot of people not nah, some people are saying that this is better than Spider, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home which I think is blasphemy but you let us know what you think. Yeah, yeah. Or, or even the first Doctor Strange, right? I, I, ah, that's a I'd, given. I'd be curious to that's see given. if it was better. I don't know. Some people are still saying the first Doctor Strange is better, but I like this one better. Anyway, uh, don't forget to look us up on social media. We're on Facebook and TikTok, Real Screeners, and Instagram, Real.Screeners. And please come back for our next Real Take on Movies.